Hey, I'm Andy Chanley from 88.5 The SoCal Sound, and this is another SoCal Sound session. We're down here in a very chilly, rainy Hollywood at the Hotel Cafe, and we're joined tonight by Chris Pierce. Thanks so much for letting us uh, sneak into your sound check. Oh, man, thank you, thank you. Thanks for coming down, especially in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> the sound check, I, I'll be honest with you, uh, truth in advertising, it's, it, we've already heard it, and uh, anybody that's coming to the show tonight's in for a treat. The band sounds fantastic. Um, and the new album, I want to make sure people uh, know about, well, it's, it's been out for this past year, but uh, American Silence, uh, just a fine record. Thank you. It was Thank really, you. really fine record. Um, and uh, a more recent single, 45 Jukebox, you've been hearing, uh, as well as uh, Chris's uh, back catalog on 88.5, the SoCal Sound lately. Um, my pal Nick Harcourt uh, said that, uh, and I'll quote him, Chris Pierce is one of the most important American songwriters today. Uh, and I'm going to sign on to that. I want to thank Nick for uh, turning us all on to you uh, 15 years ago and, and uh, many more people as well. Thank you. Thanks, um, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good one. Um, this, this album, uh, American um, Silence, I, I was listening to it recently, and um, I have a 12-year-old a, a son. Uh, and I, in saying this, I'll back up. I don't want to put words in your mouth mm. with this, but I was trying to think of what that meant to me. Mm. And um, I have, uh, some of my black friends have told me that when they got to a certain age, when they got to be about the age my boy is, uh, that older people had to talk with them. Mm. And I was thinking about just this year, as we're uh, filming this, it's Black History Month still. And um, there are, I think, eight Tyree Nichols, Alonzo Bagley, Keenan Anderson, Christopher Lee, Mercurio, Daryl Tyree Williams, Jackson Lieber, and Janavi Kandula, and Billy Dwayne Couch, all unarmed black men that were uh, killed just this year, yeah. just since the first of the year. Yeah. That informs, I never had to have that talk. Mm. I've never, and I hope I never have to have it, but I'm assuming you know what that talk is. Yeah, I, I do, and, and thank you for that. That's a wonderful question. I'm, I'm happy to have this conversation. You know, I had the talk first and the understanding first in the form of something that happened. Uh, I have a white mother, a uh, black father. I was eight years old, and I was in, uh, my mother was in a bank. She had parked at the bank. The candy store was next door. My mother was in line at the bank, and I came in from the car and reached in her purse for a dollar to go to the candy store and had security tackle me at eight years old. Wow. My mother, hysterical, saying this is my son, the guy not really understanding, and had me on the ground with my hands behind my back and so on and so forth. My, my mother's beating him with her, with her purse. So that was my first really introduction at eight. And I was a tall eight, but there's really <laughs> no excuse for uh, to treat any child like that of, of any race. Um, or adult. Yeah, or adult. And, and yes, and, um, you know, I, I feel like around 10, 11 was the time I really started you know, getting bigger, bigger shoes, bigger body. And my mother really didn't need to have the talk with me because I already felt it. And my father did have the talk um, with me then. But the, the real, I think the heavy talk really happened around 15, right before I was going to start driving. Um, and then it was, this is what you do if you get stopped. This is what you don't do. This is how you handle yourself. Um, never do this. Um, and it was, it was, for me, you know, I think all teenagers are kind of like, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll be cool, whatever. Mm -hmm. But the first time I got behind the wheel and got stopped, which was couple months after my 16th birthday, just to kind of check me out and to see what I was up to, uh, was what the stop was. Sure. All of that training and, and that talk just immediately went into effect. And ever since, and I always, I don't have kids of my own, I've got children, but um, I always think, you know, if I had my own child, I mean, how tough that must be. You know, not only for my father as a black man that had, had been through and was continuing to go through a lot of these same situations, but as a white mother, um, what a responsibility she must have felt um, to really make sure 
that I understood that she understood uh, the danger yeah. uh, that was out there. Yeah, I, I've never been, when I've been pulled over, I've been pulled over plenty, yeah. but I've never been asked, whose car is this? Right. Questions like that. And again, we don't have to go too far um, down that road uh, this evening, but your music, I really feel, um, it starts that conversation. Mm. These songs start that conversation. I hope so. The song, um, uh, How Can Anybody Be Okay With This? Yeah. That strikes me as, uh, it's almost sandblasting America the Beautiful mm. and, and taking it apart bit by bit mm. and, and showing that there, there really are two Americas. Have you had um, uh, people tell you that you've reached them uh, in, a, in a meaningful way, change their mind about things as you perform? I've, I've had a lot of people say that uh, the music's really helped them understand a perspective. Um, I've also had some pushback, of, and I, I just feel like all of it is, um, is wonderful because even with the pushback, it means you got in there. Conversation, yeah. <laughs> you got in there, and if somebody's willing to say, hey, I didn't really understand this, why did you say that? I'll say, I'm so glad you asked that. And then we'll start a conversation. Yeah. Um, and so yes, I, I, it's been great because I've been able to travel around ever since, I think it was July of 2021, is when I started back touring. Um, and I've gone all over and I've gotten to talk to some incredible people and gotten to share some perspective that's unique in my own and that's also a collective perspective, of course, uh, for the black experience in, in America. Um, and it's wonderful. It's, it's wonderful to be a, 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 a conduit of that and a, a, just a one example of uh, somebody who's taking the experiences, personal and collective, and putting them into something creative uh, that can hopefully make change. And that's all I'm really hoping to do. Yeah. Yeah. Sunny War. Um, yeah. You teaming up with her, uh, the Warren Pierce, by the way, Tolstoy is, is smiling, uh, <laughs> smiling down on you for that. That's uh, inspired. Uh, but you're also on the, the new album too, right? The one that just came out this month? Yes, yeah, Sonny has an incredible new album, uh, Anarchist Gospel. And uh, I had the pleasure of writing one with her called Swear to God. Uh, and then I'm singing and playing harmonica on that. And then she invited me to do a bunch of vocals and harmonies on uh, a couple different songs, including one with uh, myself, Sonny, and Allison Russell mm. trading ver verses, which was joyous. Uh, yeah. I love Allison's music too, she's and amazing. I got to open for her at the Troubadour a few months ago. Uh, she's just an incredible person as well. But Sonny and I met in 2015, and I've been just so amazed and intrigued by her spirit and just the fact that she's, when you hear her play and sing, it's like she's from another planet. I mean, she's so far ahead. It's such an idiosyncratic yes. way that she yes. plays. It's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. pretty incredible. Yeah, she's so, I mean, she, yeah, she's so far ahead. And I'm a forever fan. Um, whether I'm playing with her or not, I'll go to all her shows when she's in town. Uh, but I hope, I hope we're going to continue to, to be uh, making music together for a long time. I, I, I have a feeling that's going to happen. What's next for you? What are we going to see next uh, out, of, uh, out of you? I'm touring a bunch uh, starting tonight. Uh, and uh, throughout the fall, and I've got an album that's done, that's in the can, um, that I recorded at Sunset Sound with an incredible band, part of the band that you, that's here with me tonight. Uh, and so I'm gonna release that at some point, kind of coming up with a plan right now, how to right. figuring out how to release it. Uh, but in the meantime, I, I'm writing every day. I have about, I think I have another couple albums written. Um, wow. So, uh, you know, I'm just keeping it moving, there's, figuring there's it out. There's plenty coming. Yeah, there's <laughs> plenty coming. And, and I just, I'm thankful for every time I get a chance to do this. I, I've been doing it a long time. And um, every time I get a chance to sit here and share and bring some kind of joy and perspective of any kind into people's lives through music, it's, it's, a, it's a blessing to me. It's the only way to describe it. Yeah. And you're also on all kinds of TV shows and movies. Uh, you, whether you know it or not, you've heard this music on so many shows, This Is Us, and uh, I go on and on with a list. Um, that has to be uh, a pretty satisfying thing to help people tell stories in another 
completely different way too. Yeah, I mean, television is such a huge platform and, and uh, probably one of the, the, you know, television and radio are still the two big ones, I guess, to, to really get the message out there, I'd say. And, and to write songs specifically for a show to go with the scene um, is, it's just a whole different creative process. And um, I've gotten to do that a few times and then my songs have gotten picked a few times. Um, and I love it for many reasons. One, because the audience is so vast. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that my voice is getting out there and people are hearing not only my voice, but the messages, but also as an independent musician for the past 35 years, it helps keep the lights on. Right. You know, it really does. And, and that's for any independent musicians out there that are listening um, can contest to this. It, it's, you know, getting a TV spot, which is rare to a lot of us, uh, is always a, a you know, a, a day of celebration. Yeah. 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 I have about 50 more questions. Uh, I, I want to talk to you again sometime soon. Please, but I'm, I love I'm that. Gonna, I'm going to limit it to two because I know uh, you have to uh, start the show. They've got to open the doors in a minute. Um, first question, this wine. Yeah. Tell me about this, the, the <laughs> wine label you've got. Well, I've, I've been friends with a, a gentleman, a dear friend of mine, uh, Jeff Whitman in Napa for many years, 20-something um, years. And we decided about almost 20 years ago, uh, to start a little wine label called Leadbetter. Uh, and it was a labor of love, still is. Uh, the namesake, the reason the, is it? The name was, it came from, Jeff is like the biggest Pearl Jam fan oh, okay. ever. Uh, and then I'm the big, one of the biggest Lead Belly fans. There ever. you go, that's awesome. And we happened to meet up at Leadbetter Beach uh, by, near Santa Barbara. And so the three things collided and came together. And so, We've been making this wine for, uh, oh boy, almost 20 years. Uh, about wow. 500 cases, really small, beautiful wine. It's a Syrah. A, it's a Syrah, 100%. Um, we've taken a few years off because of the pandemic, but we're going to get it going again. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Last question, I'll let you go. Tell me about your first guitar. Ah, my first guitar was given to me by my godmother, Deanne, and it was a... Uh, a Yamaha, it is because I still have it, a Yamaha gut string classical kind of folk, you think of a folk singer's guitar mm -hmm. that they would carry around in the 60s, that was her guitar um, that she'd carry around and, and play songs on and uh, big fat neck and um, that was my first guitar. If you can learn to play that. Yeah, yeah. You can, learn, you can play any, any guitar. Exactly, exactly. My hands are pretty big and that was even tough. Um, but yeah, I, that was my main guitar for many years. And you still play it? Ever? Yeah, I, yeah, I do. I have it at home. I, you re I, record I use it with to it? Ever? Yeah, nice. yeah. I use it to write because it has that spirit in it of her and my childhood and, and all the incredible uh, journeys that I went on, you know, spiritually when I was a kid. Uh, I was an only child, so I'd just go out into these spaces, you know, when I was alone, uh, which was a lot. And... Um, and so that guitar, I'd carry that with me in these kind of spaces when I was a kid. And it still feels like that every time I pick it up. Nice. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, I'll ask that question quite often and people say, yep, nope, don't have it anymore. <laughs> they have, have no idea. And they just look crestfallen. <laughs> yeah, no, but I have a friend, uh, John Mui, that fixed it up for me uh, years later. And it's, there's a pickup in it now and everything. So, nice. yeah. Yeah. Thanks for taking time out in between Soundcheck and the show to, to chat with us a little bit. Chris Pierce, go buy the most recent album, American Silence, wherever you buy music, um, and uh, keep listening to them on 88.5 The SoCal Sound. We're so excited to uh, present this show tonight. Uh, best of luck to you on the tour. Thank you. And, uh, and let's, let's chat again sometime soon. Sounds good. Thank All you right. so much. Chris Pierce, right. 88.5 The SoCal Sound.